Okay, so can can you see my screen? Nice. So before we start uh, this amazing talk by Luis, I would like to introduce myself and just do a really quick intro about Wiseline and Wiseline Academy. So my name is Ana Cristina. I'm Academy Front Coordinator, and I'm really delighted to be here and, and present to you what is Wiseline and what is Wiseline Academy. So it was it is a software development and design services company uh, with operations in the US, Mexico, Vietnam, Thailand, Australia, Spain. And we have more than six years of experience and more than 1,000 employees worldwide. So we started as a product company, but we gradually migrated to services because we realized we could help others high growth companies by building better products faster and throughout our different disciplines we, we couldn't have, uh, which are technical writing, UX, such are e Are you there? I think Wiseland Powers. Can you hear me now? Yes, better. I want to turn off my camera. Sorry. I think it's heavy rain because of a hurricane. So probably that's the reason. Sorry. So uh, as I mentioned, um, we have operations in Mexico, Spain, Thailand, and Vietnam. And Wiseland Academy is the platform that offers free educational programs such as workshops, talks, boot camps, uh, teaching today's most high valuable skills. And today we have Luis with iOS deep understanding of libraries and frameworks. And we're really happy to host this session. And Luis, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Christy. Let me share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay. Yes. Um, let me present. Okay, well, my name is Luis Gomez. Uh, I'm an iOS engineer here at Wiseline. Um, I will be your instructor for today. Uh, I like to work in low level stuff. I like to ride in bike. bike. Uh, I like to play Super Smash Bros. In fact, there are a couple of friends here that play with me. And I'm also a, ta a taco tester. Okay, so the agenda for today. Uh, first, we will start with libraries. I will tell you what uh, is a library, the different types that exist, and how we link them. Then uh, we will see the differences between libraries and frameworks. Uh, where is a framework uh, and its advantage, advantages over libraries. Uh, then we will review static versus dynamic linking, uh, the advantages and disadvantages of each one. Uh, then we will see uh, the uh, architecture problem where I will talking about XE frameworks and FAT frameworks. And finally, a bonus section where I will be injecting a dynamic framework uh, at runtime time uh, in an app. Okay, there are some rules that we have to follow. Uh, so please be respectful. There are no bad questions or ideas. Be welcoming and patient and be careful in the words that we choose. Okay, so let's start. Uh, let's start with libraries. Okay, so first of all, what is a library? Well, a library, it's a binary of pre-compiled code, like the one that you see in the first image. In fact, that is, that is a real uh, library. If you copy and paste that text in a, a text editor and save it with an A extension, 
you can use that as a real library. Uh, I grow this library in C and is a that library prints the Fibonacci series. Okay. And what is the purpose of a library? Of a library? Well, its purpose is to reuse its implementation through its public interface. Uh, for a C library, the public interface is a header file, like the one that you see in the bottom image. In this case, it just have only one uh, method, the Fibonacci. Uh, okay, the types of libraries. There are different types of libraries. Well, in fact, there are only two types, dynamic libraries and static libraries. Uh, dynamic libraries are linked at runtime and static libraries are linked at build time. Uh, I will be uh, reviewing this, uh, well, the difference between them later. And uh, in the image below, you can see uh, how, to to, how to switch between static and dyna dynamic linking in Xcode. You can go to build settings, search for Mac O, and you can switch between static and, then, and dynamic. There are other um, options, but those don't apply for libraries. For example, executable is for uh, when you build an app and bundle, I think you are familiar with that. So in this case, it's just dynamic and static library. So let's start creating a, a C library, okay? Uh, why, why C? Because C is the father of Objective-C and also Swift. And many concepts of C libraries can be applied to Swift libraries and C libraries. So let's start with a C library. Here we have uh, the implementation, the source code. In this case, uh, we have two classes, class A and class B. And we also have its public interface, the header files. Uh, when we are done with the source code, we want to build it, okay? Uh, the build process has several steps. One of them is the, the compile step. Uh, in Xcode, we have two uh, compilers. Uh, the first one is Clang. Clang is for C, uh, C++ and Objective-C. And we also have the Swift compiler that is only for Swift code. Uh, so in this case, that is a C, C library. We have the Clang compiler that is going to take the implementation code, in this case, the C files, and translate them in Mac O files. A Mac O files is machine code. Okay, what's next? Uh, we have the lib2. The lib2 is going to take the Mac O files and package them in a library. Okay, if we take the, the library and we add the public headers, uh, we can use that in, a, in, an, in, other Xcode project, in, in another Xcode project. As I told you before, uh, we also have dynamic libraries. In this case, the tool to, to link the, the macro files is not lib2, it's Clang. Uh, but you don't have to worry about this because Xcode does this automatically when you select dynamic or static. Uh, if we are making a C++ library, it's, all, it's the same uh, with, your, with the only difference that we are using CPP files. And for Objective-C, we are using .m files. Okay, so let's do a demo about this. I'm gonna open Xcode and create a new library. So you have to go to File, New, Project, select Static Library, and well, select iOS. So, um, Static Library. In Objective-C or Swift, you can select the language. I selected Objective-C and I'm gonna save it in the desktop. Okay, first of all, we need to search here in build settings for Mac O type, and we can switch between static and dynamic library. So in this case, I'm gonna select static. The other important thing to select or to look at is the skip install. We, we need to set it to no because uh, when we distribute the, the static library, we need to um, distribute it in release mode. And to do that, we need to do an archive. And if we set it to, to yes, the library is not going to be copied in the, in the archive. 
So we need to set it to no to, in order to, to find the library in the archive. And we also need to set, well, this is just for Swift, but okay, this flag, build library for distribution is only for Swift. Uh, that's why I'm going to leave it in no, but for Swift, I recommend you to switch it to yes, because this will allow you to use this library in next versions of Swift compiler without having to reveal this library. But in this case, it's a C library, so no. We have a, our implementation. For this demo, I'm gonna leave it as it is, and I'm going to archive it. Okay, distribute content, uh, build products, and I'm gonna save it in the desktop. Okay, let's see it. And we have here the library, okay? So the library is a .a file, but in this case, it's a static library. So if it's a static library, as I told you before, it's just a package of Mac O files, and we actually can unpackage them. So we can unpackage them by writing this command. Sorry, let's first. Drag and drop. And here we have the unpackaged Mac O files. As you can see, here is the macro file, example library. There is the one produced by this file. Okay. So let's return to the presentation. Okay, so how can we link this library in another project? Uh, so now that we have it, we want to use it, right? In the left side, uh, in, the, in Bloom, we have the library and its header. In the right side, we have an objective C project. Uh, the implementation file, the hello.m file, is importing the header uh, of class A. Oops, okay. If we try, oh, no, sorry. Okay, so, um, okay, the implementation file is the hello.m that has the import for class A header, okay? Uh, if we try to compile the project at this point, uh, it's going to fail. Uh, why? Because the compiler doesn't know where the header is located. So how can we make the header visible to, to the compiler? Well, we need to pass uh, the minus capital A flag, I flag, followed by the headers path, okay? The one that you see uh, at the bottom, at, at the top, sorry. Um, well, now that we added the flag, if we try to build it again, we will see that the build keeps failing. But in this case, it's a linker issue, not a compiler issue. With the minus capital I, um, we tell the compiler that we can use a series of classes, methods, properties, etc that are defined in the header, but that's all. The, the one in charge to extract the implementation from the, the library and insert it in the final executable of, of your project is a linker. But at this point, the linker doesn't know where your library is located and, and what is its name. Uh, for that, we need uh, two more flags, the two that are below. Uh, with the minus capital L, we can tell the linker where are the libraries and with the minus lowercase l, we specify the library name. Uh, after that, uh, we, will be, we will be able to build the project. And Clang will create the executable. And if we add the resources, sign in, et cetera, we can create the uh, app file. But what happens with, with Swift, okay? Uh, well, it's almost the same. Uh, we need the same flags, but there is uh, one, a little change because you cannot import headers in Swift files. Uh, that's why we need a bridging header like the one in the orange box uh, where I'm including the, the headers of the library. Okay, so let's do a demo of this.
Okay. Um, here I have some libraries. Well, the projects for libraries, okay? Uh, this is a, 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 a C library. In fact, this is the one that I showed you before in the, in the image. Uh, this is the Fibonacci uh, library. Uh, you can pass it the number of, uh, of values that you want to print. And uh, this, uh, well, that's all for, for this library. Uh, for, for this demo, I'm going to build it with archive because I already have some scripts to, to build uh, these libraries without having to do it manually. I'm gonna show you the, the script. Well, this is the one for the C library. Uh, as you can see, I'm doing a normal archive. I'm passing some parameters like the project, the scheme, the configuration, the SDK, the architecture, etc. And at the end, I'm copy the, the library to a custom uh, directory and also I copy the, the header file. So let's build that. And done. Here we have the final products, the libraries. Okay, first uh, let's review what's inside the, the binary. Okay, so we can do that with this tool, nm, and drag and drop the library. That will print all the symbols inside the, the library. In this case, you can see that here is our symbol, the Fibonacci series, and there are other symbols necessary for this library, like printf and others. Okay. Now let's link that library in an example project. Okay, this is an empty project, and uh, I'm going to link uh, that library to use it in this Swift project. Here we have the, the view controller, and I'm gonna try to use uh, the Fibonacci, this one. As I told you before, the first step is uh, creating the branching header uh, because uh, the C library uh, has a, a header file. So we cannot import it directly in the Swift uh, file. We need this, the branching header that I already created before. And let's uncomment this and I'm gonna comment this, okay? So let's try to build it. And obviously fail because it cannot find the header. So let's add the, the flag here under, build set, under the build settings. We need to add the minus capital I, but Xcode already has a, a build setting for that. We don't need to pass uh, literally the minus uh, capital I. There is a field called uh, header search path. So here we can pass the path for the, the header. In this case, where is the header? Okay, so this is the project dir. Okay. Project dir. Then we have library. product and C static library. Okay, let's build it again. And as you can see, it was a, a build, a, a successful build, okay? But what happens if I try to use the Fibonacci? Okay. Fibonacci, you can see that the autocomplete works. Fibonacci and the first eight elements. Boom, failed. Let's see what happened here. So um, here is the, the build doc for, for that uh, build. As you can see the uh, compile step, this one, it was successful. 
because uh, we already passed the flag for the header. But what happened for the link step? The link step, uh, it says that it cannot find the Fibonacci symbol. And yeah, that's true because we need to pass the flag uh, to the linker to be able to find the, the library. So we can do that by passing the library search path. And as you can see, is it the, it's in the same directory as the header, as the header. So let's copy and paste. And we also need to pass the, the library name. There is no special field for, uh, field for that. Uh, so we need to pass it with other linker flags. So the library is named um, live C static library, but we need to remove the suffix live and the extension. So in this case, we just need C static library minus lowercase l and C static library. Let's build it again and voila, it's working. And this should print the Fibonacci series. And here it is. We are using a static C library in a Swift project. Let's review what's happening with the symbols. So here is the log for the compile step. I'm going to copy and paste this in a sublime text. And we don't, need, we don't need that. So here is the instruction. As you can see, this is using the Swift compiler. And uh, all of these are the, uh, all of those are the flags uh, that the uh, Swift compiler is using to, to compile this, uh, this project. Well, uh, yeah, this project. In fact, uh, I just want the view controller one because is the one that has the Fibonacci call. Sorry for that. So this is the command to build the, to compile the view controller. As you can see at the end, we have a macro file for the view controller. So this is the compile step. Let's look if we have the, uh, the flag that I told you before. Um, C static library. And here is the flag that I told you before, the minus i. And we also want to see another thing here. Uh, let's copy this file. And let's see its symbols. Okay, remember this is the compile step. And you can see that here is the Fibonacci symbol. But in this case, the symbol is undefined. Because it's unde uh, why is undefined? Because uh, the compiler is not the one in charge to link the a symbol from the static library into the final uh, executable. That's why it's unsigned. Uh, okay. So let's see what's happening with the compiler step. Mm, Digo, sorry, the link step. Here is the link static library. That, that is the, the link step. So let's copy and paste this. Find, replace, place all. First, uh, let's look for the flags. Uh, we are looking for say static library. Here is the flag to tell the compiler where is located the static library. And here's the flag 
uh, to tell the, the linker where is the static library. Sorry, the static uh, library name. And let's see what's inside the final executable. Let's clear this and M and okay. Let's look for the Fibonacci. Ah, here is the Fibonacci. And as you can see now, the Fibonacci sim symbol has an assigned uh, uh, address in memory because the linker uh, did his work. Okay, did its work. So now let's look for another symbol. Uh, as you can see, um, there are other unsigned, uh, undefined symbols. Okay. Let's look for a familiar one. Mm. In fact, there is a command. Uh, there is nm undefined only. And this one. That command, uh, nm uh, undefined only, uh, it will print only the undefined samples. Okay. So, for example, this one Objective C class UI view controller. This is an undefined sample. Does anyone know why all of these sim symbols are, uh, are undefined, despite the, the linker already link all the libraries with our executables? Uh, if you know the question, uh, the answer, please uh, write it in the chat. Okay, no one knows the answer. Okay, so nobody knows it. Uh, well, the reason for that, uh, uh, dynamic memory, yeah, Vangeli got the, the right answer. At runtime, yeah. Well, okay, the answer is because all of these symbols belong to dynamic libraries or dynamic frameworks. But um, where are those libraries and frameworks? Where are located? Well, all of them uh, are preloaded in, in iOS. Apple has already included, included them as part of the operating system. And so we don't have to worry about them. When we launch the app, all of, those, all of these symbols will be loaded in memory. That's why all of these symbols are uh, undefined at this point. Okay. So now that we have uh, the C library working in this project, let's try to, to, to link the other one, the objected C library. Uh, let's see what is it, what's inside uh, that project. Uh, as you can see, it's just print a log message. I already uh, compiled it, so it should be here. Okay, here it is. So we need to follow the same process. We need to add the header search path. I'm gonna copy and paste this by changing the name for Objective C Static Library. We also need uh, the other two flags, the library search path. And the flag for the name. There is in other linking linker flags. And remember to add the header, fi the header file in the bridging header. So, oh, I forgot to uncomment this. So let's try it. And it's working here in the build log. You can see the hello, okay? So let's return to the presentation. Okay, uh, here.
Well, before continuing, do you have any questions so far? Okay, if there is no questions, we can continue. Okay, let's review the, the options that we have to, to make the import. Uh, if, the if the library was written in C or C++, we just have one option, the, the headers weight, like we did in, in the demo. Uh, if we have an objective C library, we can use either headers or clang models. Uh, but what's a clang model? Well, a clang model is just a group of headers. In that way, we don't have to import header by header and just import the whole model, which contains all the necessary headers. Uh, in blue, you can see the, the header weight. And in orange, you can see the, the model weight, which consists in, in a file called uh, model.modelmap that contains the model name and the headers to include. Um, why I didn't use models for the Objective-C example? Well, because for libraries, we need to manually create the model. And I didn't do it. That's the only reason. Uh, but now, uh, what happens with Swift? Uh, does anyone know what happened with public interface for Swift library? Uh, do we have headers or uh, do we have another uh, kind of file? Of file? Uh, if you know the answer, please uh, write it in the chat. Don't they generate behind the scene? Yeah, but uh, is it a header or is another file? We don't need headers. Okay. The model. Okay. Well, uh, Swift doesn't support headers. Uh, it only supports models. Uh, in this case, Swift models. Uh, unlike headers, and clan models, the Swift models are compiled. Are compiled. Uh, that means that they are not readable as headers or, or clan models. Uh, so Swift doesn't support headers, just Swift models. It also supports uh, clan models to bring compatibility with Objective-C. Uh, and remember that a Swift uh, model is a group of compiled headers. Uh, but in fact, a Swift model is a directory which contains a, a file for the documentation. Uh, the documentation is that text that you add in your code with three slashes uh, to help other uh, devs to understand your public interface. Okay. And the Swift model direct directory also conta contains a Swift model file for a specific architecture. In this case, it's an x86 underscore 64 that is the one for simulator. Uh, what else? Uh, well, if we enable uh, the flag that I told you be before, the build for distribution uh, under the Xcode build settings, the model will also uh, contain a Swift interface files, a Swift interface fail file that uh, its purpose is to to help a newer um, Swift uh, compilers to understand your your old old library. Okay, so let's do another demo. So here is my uh, Swift static library. It only prints uh, uh, the number P. Okay, as you can see, it doesn't have headers. And let's see the library. Okay, the library is here. And here is the Swift model. The Objective-C and C has the header file, the header file, but the Swift library has the Swift model. In this case, I build this, uh, uh, this library without the build for distribution uh, setting enabled. And that's why it doesn't have a Swift interface. But in fact, we can we can do that. Let's enable this. This is the file. Uh, well, this is my script to to build the Swift uh, static library. Let's change this to JS. Yes. 
and build the library again. So here we have the Swift interface, okay? Something that, I'm, uh, that I don't know why Xcode does it in that way is that uh, it duplicates all the, all the files. As you can see, here is a Swift interface and here is, an, here is another Swift interface that is the same. It just uh, has a different name, but I don't know why. Probably something uh, in Xcode or I, I don't know. But uh, that's the way that Xcode uh, create the, the Swift model. So let's use this library in our static example. Okay, before that, uh, let's view the symbols of that library. Okay, here are the, all the symbols for the Swift static library. Um, as you can see, it's very hard to read because a Swift compiler has a function called mangle and mangle, what it does is introduce a, a, a series of strings uh, to make the symbols unique. Um, okay, but there is, a, there is a way to, to demangle uh, this. Uh, we can uh, add the, the next, uh, Command is x run Swift demangle. And now it's very easy to read the symbols. And here is our, our P uh, method static, Swift static library, Swift class dot P and decimals. Okay. So let's try to use that, that library. Uh, I'm gonna try to import the, the library and build it. And of course it cannot find it. Okay, so uh, in case of three, because we have a different compiler uh, we need a different uh, build setting. So the name of that build setting is Swift compiler import paths. Swift compiler mm, import paths. So it's in the in this directory, pretty dear library product Swift static library. Okay. Let's try to build it. And Let's try to use it. Well, we can verify that the autocompletes works. And now let's try to use it and fail because it cannot find the symbol. Yeah, on the find symbol, static Swift, uh, Swift static library dot Swift class dot P, et cetera. That is the one that we saw here. So let's pass the two flags that are missing. Then, because at this point, uh, we have macro files. So the, the compiler, well, clan compiler took the object C and, and C files and translated them to macro file. The Swift compiler took the Swift file and translated it to a macro file. So at this point, we have the same kind of, of files, Mac O. So in this case, we don't have to distinguish between Swift and Objective-C because the linker is the same, the linker is Clang. So let's add the missing flags. Library search path. Uh, 
Swift and other linker flags. Swift. Let's build it. And it's working. It's printing the P number. Okay. So a quick summary about libraries. Well, a library is a binary of precompiled code. A library can be static or dynamic. Uh, the compilation flags are minus capital I that specifies the path to the given headers. Under the build settings, you can find it uh, with header search path for Clang, well, for C, uh, C++ or EFTC, and Swift compiler search path for Swift code. Uh, the linking flags, uh, minus capital L, that specifies the path to the given libraries. Uh, under build settings is library search path, and uh, minus uh, lowercase l, specifies the library name. Uh, you have to set it without the uh, leaf prefix, and the uh, I prefix, uh, the A prefix, the linker, because the linker will attach them by itself. Uh, okay, a model is a group of headers uh, or compiled headers if the library, the library was written in, in Swift. And to use a library in Swift, they need to have a, a model, a client model or a Swift, a Swift model. Otherwise, we need to create, to create a bridging header. So, any question? Let's see the chat. Um, are those duplicated files to be able to run on simulator and physical device, device or that's different? Uh, that's an interesting question that I uh, will be answer, uh, answering later. Uh, they are different, the architectures differs. Ah, yeah, Jesus already responded you, but I will do a, a demo about that uh, later, okay? So libraries uh, versus frameworks. Uh, well, first, uh, what is a framework in iOS? Uh, well, a framework is a directory a structure which contains the binary, like the library, the header, the headers, and modules. Okay, so it's just a directory structure. And what are the difference between libraries and frameworks? Well, both can be static or dynamic. Uh, in the case of libraries. Modules and uh, headers uh, need to be manually imported. Uh, in case of frameworks, uh, we don't need to, uh, uh, sorry, in case of libraries, modules need to be manually created, as I told you before. And in frameworks, uh, modules are automatically created when you archive the framework. Uh, in case of libraries, uh, headers uh, and the binary import uh, you have to do it manually, like I just did in the demo. Uh, but in case of frameworks, you just need to drag and drop the framework in Xcode. So that's why uh, you should use frameworks over libraries. And in this case, the, the flags for uh, linking a framework are different. We just have uh, two flags, the minus, uh, capital F to specify where is the, uh, where is the framework and the uh, flag framework uh, to specify the, the module name, well, the framework name, the, from, the framework name. Uh, this is not always necessary. Uh, it's necessary just when you have a, a framework that it has a name that is different from its module name, okay? And let's do a demo. So the preview is the same, is the Swift a framework. Well, in this case, it's a framework, it's not a, a static library. You can create it by file, new, a project and select framework. And we also can switch between static and dynamic with Mac O type. Okay. In this case, it's a, a 
this is a dynamic library. Uh, and it's the same uh, class as before that uh, prints the P number. Let's see how can we identify a, a dynamic library or a static, uh, sorry, a dynamic framework or a static framework. Uh, we can do that with file and drag and drop the binary. Here is the dynamic and drag and drop it. And you can see that this is dynamically linked and it was built for a simulator. Now let's do the same for the static framework. File, drag and drop. And this is the message that you get when you have a static library. There is an archive. Okay, remember that this is a tool that we use to unpackage the, the archive, sorry, the, the library. Okay, so that's, it. that's one way that you can difference between, uh, uh, between them to know if it's a static or dynamic uh, framework, but we also can identify them just by inspect them. As you can see, this is an uh, executable and this is just a binary file. Okay, this is the example project to, to test uh, the dynamic versus static, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the library versus, uh, versus the framework. Mm. Okay. Okay, um, so let's look for framework. Framework search paths. And I'm gonna drag and drop the static library. Let's see what happens when I drag and drop it. Let's see what happens here. Okay, as you can see, it automatically adds the, the path for the, for the framework. So let's try to use it. I built a library for simulator. That's why it's showing up this error because I tried to build it for an iOS device. So let's, change to simulator. And it's working. As you see, it's easier than libraries. Something important uh, to notice is that the uh, either frameworks or libraries, but if they are static, you need to make sure that they are here in link binary with libraries. Because remember that uh, static uh, libraries are linked at runtime. So let's remove this. Remove reference. And there is a bug in Xcode that when you remove a framework, uh, it doesn't remove the flag. So I'm going to remove it manually. Now let's add the dynamic framework. I do a, I did a clean to to remove the the old uh, app and here is the path for the dynamic framework, okay? Let's try to, to build it.
And the build was successful, but the app crash, crashed at runtime. This is because it cannot find the, the dynamic framework. Let's see what's happening. Uh, it's crashing because when the app uh, launches, uh, it cannot find the dynamic framework. That's because we are linking the framework instead of copy the framework. So let's copy the framework. Okay. We also need to set the path where the frameworks are located with air path. And the path is gonna be in, the framework is gonna be in the root directory of the app. So now this is working. Let's see if the app contains the framework, yeah, here is the framework. If we remove the framework, the app crashes because it cannot find it. Uh, let's clean it. And remove it from here. Let's beat it again and it should crash. Yeah, because it cannot find it. Okay. Now let's continue with the, the framework summary. Well, a framework is a directory structure which contains the binary models, etc. A framework can be dynamic or static. Um, the compilation and linking flags are minus capital F to specify the path to the given framework and uh, the flag framework to specify the library name or framework name, the, sorry, the, the, the framework name. This is wrong. And also uh, they are drag and drop. Okay, so uh, do you have any question? Okay, Jaden, Gary, so we're linking a framework like Flutter world, like the C file stuff. Mm, I'm not sure if I understand your question. Ah, okay. Well, sorry for that. <laughs> but if you want to kind of explain it more, and I will be answering that uh, question in, in another section of Q&A. Okay, now review the, uh, the static versus dynamic uh, linking. Well, uh, the static, as I told you before, uh, the linking uh, is at build time, while dynamic, uh, the linking is at run time. Uh, for static, we have a fast launch, uh, while in dynamic, we, the launch uh, of the app is, is slow. Um, in case of the static, the app size is smaller uh, because Clang is intelligent enough to, to only take the symbols that you are using in the, in the app and not copy the whole uh, library like it does when you are using frameworks. That's why uh, 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 an app that uses uh, static linking uh, is smaller than an app that uses dynamic linking. Uh, in, static, in static, we just uh, have one uh, the sim, while in dynamic, we have as many the sims as frameworks. Um, but in, in static, uh, I saw that there are some Swift UI problems. If you have a static library that has Swift UI code, when you try to use that library in another project, you cannot see the preview. Okay. So let's do a demo of static versus linking. Static versus dynamic. Okay, so here I have a, a project that uses CocoaPods. Here I have like almost 50 pods. And by default, CocoaPods was a dynamic 
uh, dynamic frameworks. If we open the static one, you can see that I have the same pods, but I also using a frameworks, but in this case, I'm using the static linking. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, build the, uh, those projects because take a lot of time because it has a lot of uh, pods. So I already have the benchmarks for that. So first let's see the launch time. This is the static one. And this is the dynamic one. You can profile that by open instruments and find new and using up launch uh, tool, okay? So there are different steps when you launch uh, an app. Uh, first, we have the initialization. Uh, this is Apple stuff, we can do nothing here. So yeah, we can do nothing here, okay? That's Apple doing uh, his uh, its stuff. Then we have the uh, initialization uh, system interface. Uh, here's where all the dynamic libraries are loaded. Okay, as you can see, in case of dynamic, we have, well, in case of static, we have less than, a, less than a second. We have 853 milliseconds. And for dynamic, we have almost two seconds, 1.94 seconds. That's uh, more than the double of time for static. And we also have this uh, static runtime initialization and a uh, static runtime initialization. Uh, this is funny because it's a side effect of dynamic linking. If we uh, are using dynamic linking, we are copy, copying the whole framework. Uh, if we are copying the whole framework, we have more code. And if we have more code, probably we, we have more static properties. So that's why it's taking more time uh, in dynamic than in static. Static took uh, 74 milliseconds and dynamic took uh, 100, uh, 157 milliseconds. Then we have uh, uh, the, the UI stuff where your free screen is great, your fields your first screen is created, but it's the same for both. And then the foreground st uh, state. So for dynamic, uh, this app took 2.7 seconds and for static took 1.6 seconds. That was 41% there for static than dynamic. Now let's review the size. Um, I archive both projects and then export them to iPhone 12. And here are the results. This is the dynamic one and this is the static one. For, dyna for dynamic, we have 9.1 uh, megabytes uh, compressed and 25 megabytes uncompressed. And for static, we have 7.1 megabytes and 19.2 megabytes. So the static app uh, is smaller than the dynamic app and it's the same app. So that's why big companies use static linking. And when I said big companies, there, uh, I'm saying like Uber, uh, Airbnb, Spotify, Rappi, uh, and probably uh, other others companies. But those ones that I mentioned, I'm sure that they use uh, static linking. So probably if you, uh, in your project, uh, if you are not using static linking, you should consider uh, to, to use that. 
So let's do a quick summary of static versus dynamic linking. Uh, well, static linking occurs at, at, compile, at compile time. Uh, dynamic linking occurs at runtime. Uh, launch time is faster in static than dynamic linking. In most of the time, the app size is smaller in static than dynamic linking. I said most of the time because there are some cases um, that static libraries re require an, a, a clang flag, a, a clang flag, this flag, the one that is in, in, in at the bottom, uh, object, uh, the flag OBJC. Uh, and this flag, what it does is that copy the whole library into the binary. Uh, this is because, as you can know, Objective-C is very dynamic. And you can create an, uh, an Objective-C class by just knowing its name with a class called NSS uh, object from class, something like that. So that's the reason that uh, not always this is true. And finally, this is the pod file that you need to, well, the, the line of the code in the pod file that you need to change to, to start using uh, uh, static linking. Ah, Square also uses static uh, linking. Okay, do you have any questions so far? Okay, if there is no question, we can continue. So the architecture problem. So as I saw in the comments, um, are there any implication of changing that line of code in the pod file? Uh, yeah, there are some uh, implications. Uh, when I uh, when we do it, when we did it in in our project, uh, we found. Okay. Please mute your microphones, please. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there are some implications. Uh, you can find that uh, when you change the the linking from dynamic to static, the app stops working because there are some random uh, problems. Uh, probably with bundles or with other stuff, but there is not something specific. Uh, each project is different. And when you uh, change from dynamic to, to, to static linking, you may or may not uh, find uh, issues. But yeah, sometimes happens, sometimes not, not happens, don't happen. So yeah, uh, are those dynamic, uh, which ones? Mm. Probably is where probably uh, on, are those dynamic? Well, if you can explain more your your question. Okay, let's. Okay, I'm talking about Swift Package Manager dependencies. Uh, I'm not too familiar with Swift Package Manager dependencies, but we can uh, see if they are static or dynamic if you look in the derived data. For example, if you go to the derived data, let's see. Uh, is the name of... Dynamic linking, okay. So you can go to the derived data, go to build, and intermediates, uh, archive intermediates, build products pad, release. And here you can find if you are using a static or dynamic. So here is the framework and you can open it and drag and drop it to the console and see if it's a dynamic or a static framework. That's one way that you can verify if you are using dynamic 
or uh, static in Swift Package Manager. Probably there is another way that is easier, uh, but I'm not too familiar with Swift Package Manager. So yeah, Vangeli answered you that yes, you can create a static library with Swift Package Manager. Good, so let's continue. Mm. Okay, so the architecture problem, well, either libraries or frameworks only support one architecture. If you try to compile one library or framework, framework that was built for a specific architecture in another one, uh, you will see that you are not able to do that. Uh, those, are one, uh, those are some of, of examples of errors that you can find if you try to do that. Yes, the, uh, the bottom one is for Swift. I think the in the middle one is for Object C, and the one in the bottom is for also for Swift. So let's try to, to do that. So let's try to build uh, this example, the one that I, I use for uh, libraries versus framework, but. Okay, let's build it for, for a simulator. Okay, I need to add the framework here. Okay, it works. So now, now let's try to, do, to build it for a, a real device. In this case, I'm gonna select my iPhone and let's try to build it and it failed. Why? Because yeah, a Swift framework was built for a simulator and a, we are trying to use it in an ARM64 device that is an iPhone, okay? So where are the solutions for that? Well, there are two solutions. We can use XE frameworks or FAT frameworks or FAT libraries. Uh, XC framework is a, a directory structure or of frameworks. Uh, yeah, of frameworks or libraries for different architectures. You can see the directory structure in the images below. And for a FAT library, uh, well, a FAT library is, well, a, a FAT binary is the same as a library or a framework, but there are several architectures embedded in, into the binary. Okay, so one binary has multiple architectures. Like you can see in the image uh, at the bottom, the one with uh, green letters, uh, that it says that it has uh, the uh, simulator architecture and the iPhone architecture. So not, now let's see the difference between XE frameworks and FAT frameworks. Well, XE frameworks, and dynamic frameworks both support multiple architectures and both support dynamic and static. Uh, both support uh, either uh, frameworks or libraries, uh, but XE frameworks is the, the Apple solution. It's a new way, well, it's not new, but it's newer than FAT uh, frameworks. And FAT frameworks, well, as I told you, is the easier way to do it. Uh, the XE frameworks no need a uh, extra configuration. You just need to, to drag and drop it in Xcode. And for, fa for FAT frameworks, you also uh, can drag and drop it. But the problem is that if you have simulator architecture in your FAT framework, you will need to remove that architecture before sending it to the App Store. Uh, if you send it uh, an app that, that has uh, a library that includes simulator architecture, Apple is gonna reject your, bina your binary. Okay, so let's do a demo. So it's the same uh, project as before, but now we are uh, building to support multiple architectures. Okay, so here is the uh, script. Uh, in order to create a FAT library, uh, we use the LiPo tool. We need to pass where is the, uh, the binary uh, of 
uh, simulator and the binary for uh, iPhone. Uh, as you can see here, I'm archiving the same project two times, but with different configuration. Here I'm creating an iPhone simulator with this architecture. And here I'm creating an iPhone OS uh, SDK with uh, this architecture, ARM64. And here in LiPo, I'm passing both uh, binaries to create a, a final uh, binary which contains both architectures. In case of uh, EXIF framework, uh, we need to use Xcode build, create Exit framework. We cannot do that in, in Xcode. We need to do it in a, in a script like this. And we need to pass the framework for simulator and the framework for an iPhone. Well, not just the simulator and the iPhone, you can pass all the architectures that you want, also for the LiPo tool. And this will produce an Exit framework. So let's see the... The frameworks. Um, here is the XC framework that, as you can see, it has both architectures. Uh, ARM64 for iPhone, well, for real devices, and x86 underscore 64 for simulator. And we have uh, the different uh, frameworks for each one. Okay, if we look at the models, we see that here are the models for uh, the SUI uh, for simulator. And here we have uh, models for uh, a real device. For FAT framework, we just have one framework, but this binary contains both architectures. Let's verify that we can use LiPo info drag and drop the static, uh, sorry, the FAT framework. And here you can see that uh, architectures in FAT file are a simulator e ARM64. Let's do it the same with With the XC framework. Oh, sorry, that, that was in the, the command. Mm, we can't use a LiPo. I just forgot what was the. Mm, well, I don't remember what was the uh, the the command to to print the architecture for for this one. If I remember, uh, well, I'm well, uh, if I remember it later, I, I will tell you. But for now, I I just uh, forgot it. Okay. So. Let's open the example. And let's drag and drop our frameworks. Let's try first with the FAT framework. I'm going to build it for simulator. And it's working. Now let's try with a real device. And it's also working. So let's remove this. And also remove the framework flag because remember that this is a book of Xcode. Now let's drag and drop the XC framework. 
Uh, the icon is also another bug of Xcode because this is not the icon for uh, XC frameworks, but it works. So let's try first with, with an iPhone. First, let's clean the project and let's run it. It's working for uh, real devices and now let's try it with a simulator. And it's also working. So that's the way that you can uh, use multiple architectures in your frameworks. So do you have any question at this point? Can we have a mix of static and dynamic frameworks in a pod file? Mm, that's a good question. I think we, we can, but it's a hacky way. Uh, you need to, to do a post install uh, script where you set uh, which um, where you set which uh, frameworks will use static and which frameworks will use dynamic linking. But there is no like a, a support uh, feature from Cocoa Pods to do that uh, in one line like I showed you I showed you before. So yeah, it's possible, but it's um, a little bit hacky. Ah, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Static and dynamic, yeah, you, you completely mix uh, them. Uh, I was talking about, uh, no, sorry, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was uh, correct, yeah. You need to, to manually set the, the script for, for both. Uh, to have a framework inside, inside other framework, I know Apple Docs says it's back practice to do this. Is something similar or what you did when adding the framework into your iOS project? To have a framework inside other framework. Um, well, the, if, if, you, uh, if, you, if you are talking about XC frameworks, that has two frameworks, uh, that's the proper way to do it. That's the Apple way to do it. Uh, the, the FAT framework uh, that has two uh, architectures embedded in one uh, binary, uh, yeah, it's possible to do it. And Apple won't uh, reject our binary if we remove the simulator architecture. But uh, there is no but there is not the best choice because uh, you have XE frameworks and that should be the, the way to do it. Like a dependency. Uh, uh, it, I don't understand your question, but uh, if you want, you can unmute uh, your microphone and ask me the, the question. Like one framework depends on another framework. So something like that, if we have, for example, this framework that it's inside another framework, something like, like this. Mm, okay. Yeah, it should work because if you can specify the path for where is the static uh, framework, uh, it will work. But I'm not sure if that's the, well, I think that's not the, the correct way to do it, but uh, for, for sure it, it can work because if you can set the, the path for the framework, the app will uh, run and it will work. Uh, the umbrella header is something different. There is inside the client models. Uh, for example, if we go here, If we open the model map, 
Here you can see that this is the umbrella header that is pointing to this header here. But that's something about the client model. Umbrella framework. Um, I, I'm not familiar with umbrella frameworks. Probably that's another kind of, of hacky way to, to do a, to do this, to do multiple architectures, but yeah, I'm not familiar with, with that, sorry. If we compile a library in a version of Xcode, exists any possibility to have a problem to use it in another project that is combining a newer version of Xcode? Yeah. Um, as I told you, you can enable this flag. Build library for distribution and uh, yeah, you, you can use this flag in a Swift uh, framework. Uh, so you can enable this. And if you enable this, you can use uh, this framework in a new version of Xcode that has a new version of Swift compiler without problem. Well, almost the time. There are some cases that it doesn't work because this is like in beta. Is not fully released, uh, but yeah, the idea the idea is to to uh, enable this flag where, uh, if you can, and in that way you can use it in new versions of of Xcode. What you can do is create a a, a Swift framework in a new version of Xcode and use it in a previous version. That doesn't work. Okay, like a focal framework to access to another framework. Okay, so let's continue. With the bonus. Okay, so now we are going to inject, well, no. Uh, well, if dynamic uh, binaries like libraries or frameworks are loaded at runtime, can we add more binaries than the application initially, initially contains? Yes, we can, but Apple doesn't allow this. If we do it, we can be banned uh, from the App Store. But in this case, we will do it uh, locally just for fun. Let's close all my, all my windows. Mm. So here I have uh, two projects, project A, project B, okay? Both projects are very similar, just with one difference. Well, both have a, a provider that returns a view controller, okay? This provider needs to be a, a child of NS, a NS object and a, its method need to have the keyword uh, for objective C. This will return a view controller. Let's view, let's see the view controller. Uh, it's just a view controller that has a, a label uh, with flow B and green background. For the um, A case, we have red background and flow A, okay? So these both are the projects and here are the frameworks, okay? Both are dynamic, are dynamic, okay? So let's review the example. Let's clean the app. And let's build it. Okay, this example project just have one button to go to the next view controller, but in case uh, it's not able to find any, any framework to, to go to the next uh, 
to the next screen. So let's review this. We can open the, the, the app file. And here we can see that there is a no frameworks. So let's create a secret folder here. My secret folder. And let's add one of the frameworks here. Now imagine this like if you are downloading this framework from somewhere for some server uh, while you are using your app. So this is the first step, getting the dynamic framework from some, somewhere. And probably you will need to do more stuff here uh, to extract the, to get the, the file from your, uh, uh, the, to extract the, the, the XC framework, well, to extract the framework uh, from somewhere, like I told you, the from internet or for anywhere. Next, we need to to load the the framework. In this case, it's located in my secret folder, uh, Swift Framework dot framework, and we need to uh, load the framework at at runtime. Uh, next, we uh, need to to create an object from from the mobile and the target class. Um, here is the, uh, the class that I told you before, the NS class from string. And we need to pass the model name and the class name. Uh, we initialize that class. And next we perform a, an action. In this case, we are going to call the method get next view controller. That will return us an unmanaged object that we will cast to a view controller. And with the view controller, we will push it to the navigation. Okay, so and it's working. Now let's try to use the another framework. Let's remove this one and try it with B. And as you can see, uh, the flow uh, changed because now I'm injecting a different framework. Uh, so this is possible. You can download a framework and use it at runtime in your app. But if Apple notice that in your app, uh, you will be banned from the App Store. So don't do it, but at least you know that this is possible. E final Q and A. This is the last uh, Q and A. So all your doubts about uh, this course, you can write it in the in the chat. Uh, can you recommend some lectures? Yeah, there is something. There's some lecture from the Digner Ranch. Mm. I have it in somewhere in my Slack, but I don't have it uh, right now. But uh, well, I, I have these uh, resources. First, uh, we have uh, this repository that I'm including all the examples that I did here. Also, I have. Uh, this chat sheet for libraries and frameworks. Um, here you can see what is a library, a header, framework, exit framework, fat library, fat framework, the difference between libraries, framework, exit frameworks, uh, the difference between static, dynamic, uh, how to build each of one, how to build a library, a framework, an exit framework, a fat library, and uh, CocoaPods, and library evolution, that is the library for the distribution. Um, we also have this. It's another chat sheet that I made. Uh, here I have recommendations for your project uh, in order to reduce your app size, like use final class, pre-byte, 
uh, avoid open public, uh, some configurations that you can set in, in build settings to reduce the, the size. For Clang, for Swift compiler, uh, for assets, and also I have a, a post install in CocoaPods uh, to apply all of these configurations for your pods. Uh, what I can do is add more resources uh, here because I don't have them right now, but I can add them at the bottom, okay? Because I have some that can help you. Uh, will you share the repo? Yeah, it's public. You can uh, do a screenshot of these and uh, all of them are public. Okay, if there is no more questions, uh, I give the floor to Marielle. Hi, thank you, Luis. Thank you everyone for being here. We're gonna send you uh, the repo if you all want it. And finally, before leaving, I'm gonna send you via chat the, the link of our feedback survey. For us, it's really important for you to give us feedback to be able to improve all of our webinars and everything that, that you saw today. So please don't leave before filling out the feedback and we'll be sending you the final email tomorrow. So thank you so much. Thank you, Luis. And see you soon with us at White Line Academy. See you guys.